On today's video, I'm going to show you how to create beautiful ambient guitar soundscapes using the Eros Loop Studio. Let's get to work. Everybody, I'm Bill Vinsel. This is Chords of Orion. It's all about ambient guitar. Before we get started on this ambient guitar soundscape walkthrough, two housekeeping items. One is the video is going to be kind of long, so I'll have video chapters below so you can skip around. And two, I want to let you know that Singular Sound did send me the Eros Loop Studio, just so you know where it came from. All right, let's start off with the guitar. This is an Eric Johnson Stratocaster, and I've got a clean sound set up through a small pedal board on the floor. Here's what that sounds like. You might be able to tell that I'm in drop D for this exercise. Yeah, pretty nice. Now, that little pedal board is comprised of a Strymon Compadre compressor into a Strymon Riverside Overdrive into my volume pedal and then on into a Strymon Iridium amp modeler. And that's giving me just this kind of slightly gritty sound. <laughs> Yeah, kind of cool. So let's talk about what I've got set up on the table here. From that little pedal board on the floor, I'm running into a Strymon timeline with a pattern style delay. Yeah, just, just a really nice little delay going on. I'm running from the timeline into the Loop Studio and then out of the loop studio into a big sky where I've got a cloud reverb set up. And as you might be able to figure out here, we're going to be running a delayed guitar tone into the looper and then looping that tone. And then we're going to be applying the big sky reverb to everything before it. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the Eros Loop Studio. Yeah, this thing is really powerful. There are so many options. Let's go into the global settings first. I'm not going to go through everything, but as you'll see, there's a lot of different options. I want to bring your attention to a couple of different items. The first thing is called Loop Decay. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. But basically, it's a new feature in the Loop Studio that allows you to decay loops on a given track as you overdub. This is really great for Frippertronics style looping where you just want everything to continually fade out. And then the other thing I want to mention that I'm going to use here for this song or this soundscape is the uh, ordering of the record, overdub, and play buttons. By default, the Loop Studio is set up to do record, play, and overdub with the button. But I'm going to go ahead and switch it to record, overdub, and play so that hopefully I can create smoother transitions as I finish out my tracks. All right, let's go ahead now and create a new song in the Loop Studio. So I hit Loop Studio, I'm gonna hit the plus sign, and I get a new song. So this is great. Let's see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna leave it set to stereo, and we're gonna leave it set to six by six. The Loop Studio allows for two different track settings. Two by two is two different song parts, and each song allows you to create two tracks for the part. Six by six, allows you to create up to six different song parts with six tracks per song part. That's 36 unique loops that you can create. Whoa, that's pretty cool. You can sync, whoa, where, where we go? There we go. You can synchronize your tracks. I wanna do a free form ambient soundscape, so I'm gonna leave that off. And you can quantize your tracks also to a measure. I'm going to leave that off too, again, because this is more freeform. So there's a lot of other options there, but let's go ahead and save it. And what we'll see here 
is that we've got three main operations that we can do. We can record, and this will be the record, overdub, and play button. In the middle, we can move from track to track, and on my left, we can move from part to part. Again, we've got up to six parts. I'm not that good. We're going to stick with one part today. And we're going to start out, I'm going to start out with a very simple figure, just a motif. Here's what it sounds like. Then I'll record it. <laughs> Okay, just very simple, and I'm using my volume pedal to create volume swells. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. I'm going to play that motif, and then I'm going to stop the recording so I have a loop. Here we go. There we go. So I've got my first loop, and it's sounding really nice. It might be a little loud for me, so let's adjust the volume. Oh, look at that. I've got a mixer. So I'm going to bring down my first track just a bit. Yeah, cool. Now I'm ready to record my next track, and for this one, I want a low drone, so I'm simply going to play the two octave Ds on the guitar. Okay, just that, okay? And as you'll see, I'm gonna create a different sized loop from the first loop. Let's do this. Isn't that nice? Okay. I feel like I need to adjust the mix a little bit. And I want to bring down... I actually created two drones by mistake, but hey, some mistakes are good, aren't they? All right, so let's just take a look at that. I've got my motif running on track number one. Then I've got my main drone running on track number two. And track number three is my unanticipated uh, drone, but that's, I like that a lot. All right, the next thing I want to do is create a little bit of a picked guitar part. So I'm going to do, I'm going to play this. going to play something like that. It may not turn out exactly like that, but we'll see. Again, I can create just independently length uh, tracks. Here we go. that so far. I'm ready for some lead tones though now. So I'm going to turn on my Riverside and here's, actually I'm going to go ahead and stop this. We'll start it in just a minute. Now, just watch what happens here. Oh, there comes the big stop sign and everything faded out and now we're stopped. If I press this button again, everything will start back up. So let's Let's listen to my lead tone here. Yeah. 
It's a pretty simple lead tone, right? So I've got a little gain cranked. I also turn the tone knob all the way down on the guitar to make it kind of just mellow. And I'm just gonna play some high leads. You know, something simple like that. Let me go ahead and start the uh, soundscape again, and we'll add another track and um, see what we get. Yeah, nice. Okay, you ready? Here we go. That's nice, but I do want to bring that, oh yeah, that's cool. So I'm liking this so far, I'm ready to now to start layering on some leads that kind of go with this. So what I'm going to do is switch these timeline to the dual delay setting and I've demoed this before but the dual delay setting allows you to set the second delay to an 8 to 1 ratio so if I set the time to the full 25 milliseconds for delay 1 delay 2 is actually going to be a 20 second long delay which means now I can do, on top of this beautiful soundscape, I can play some Frippertronic style uh, motifs. And I'm going to go ahead and record them because I've got several minutes now of recording time. You've, in stereo, by default, you get 10 minutes. I don't know where I am, but I know I've got several minutes. So let me go ahead and play a little bit and let's see what we get. the timeline now as this rolls to an end you can see that that last loop is super long so we're not going to stop until I get to the end of the loop stick with me now So actually, this is taking a while, but what I want to tell you is that you can actually offload your song and then pull it into a piece of recording software and you can kind of, you know, work with it from there. 
It's really nice. Now you can see I'm fading out. Oh, there's our stop. So that's how you create, or one way to create really beautiful ambient guitar soundscapes with the Eros Loop Studio. It is eminently, eminently very flexible. I feel like I don't deserve this device in a way because I don't really know how to effectively use the song parts at this point with ambient guitar soundscapes. That's something that I'm really gonna have to work on and learn, but man, what a wonderful challenge. So what are your thoughts? I'm really interested to know what you think about this use of the Eros Loop Studio. If you're an ambient guitarist, are you thinking, wow, I could use that? Or perhaps you're thinking, well, I already have an XYZ Looper and I can do this already. If you do, drop a comment below and let me know what kind of looping gear you're using and what kind of results you're getting. Here is a playlist of Frippertronics stuff and I'll see you over on those videos. <laughs>